What up, my fellow Knicks fans? This is your guy, Marcellus Ease, and don't panic quite yet. So the Knicks in their last road trip, things quite got rough. Attention to detail, fourth quarter execution, and rim protection were some of the major key issues that plagued us to some early questionable losses. But all these things could be adjusted as the team builds up chemistry and also anticipating some players coming off an injury right back into the lineup. So in this segment, we'll touch base on a few concepts from rim protection to the defense to the quality shots that we're getting off, fourth quarter execution for sure. And also we'll do a comparison to the league officiating. Very important right here, the officiating in regards to straight line drives. So we'll compare what the league says is legal versus some of the calls that we've seen plague the Knicks, especially in that road game in Houston, as well as in Atlanta. So I'm not going to say no more. Let's just get to it. A nigga like me, man, I love the game. Be feeling like one of them ball playing niggas, you know, like Bird, Magic or something. Yeah, you know, a nigga got dough. A nigga could leave the league. But if I leave, the fans still going to love me, man. So with this new look group this season, we're kind of trying to figure out what's going on with them. What are their habits? What are their tendencies? And it was very noticeable in the matchup against Cleveland in the third quarter, the way the Knicks gave up so many paint points that there might be an issue here. And those problems continue to plague us on this road trip. The lack of rim protection kind of had a trickle down effect because you've seen it correlate to the defensive rebounding and also the way we gave up so many second chance points. And a lot of the younger players, look at Shingun just straight styling on us on this road trip. Now in Atlanta, we see Cat in a drop back coverage, just getting in Trey Young's way as Bridges try to make his recovery. But I don't know if he's afraid of the alley pass right here. And he might not still be in a good position to even defend it, but Trey Young just walks in here. Wow. I even contested. Again, right here. Check out this pass from Trey Young. Wow. And Cat, once again, he's not good vertically recovering and swiping that block. Let's take a look at that one more time coming off a double screen. Man, the fact that pass even got through there is crazy. But Towns right here, just to on his recovery to protect the rim. This is not his bag. He could protect the rim with more of the back to the basket guys. Like Joel and B when he's posting or Jokic. Towns could really contest, but just getting back vertically, that's not his bag. Yeah, Tibbs is gonna have a long season to figure this out. Here's almost a rare sighting of him kind of getting a position to swipe down on a shot. It's, it's going to be rare we're going to see him block shots like that. He's more of a center that could defend guys who have their back to the basket, like Jokic at times, and Rudy Gobert if he's trying to post Towns up. Towns could defend those guys like that. But guys just vertically going up, it's never shown to be his thing. Again, just looking at this one more time, notice how he's backpedaling. He steps back and he steps forward and gets that swipe. That kind of contest this season so far, we just seen defenders go right through that. Trey Young is actually a lot smaller, but guys normally 6'5 plus, they've been making their mid-air adjustments and going right through that. Here's another play that shows Towns' blocking ability. You see right here, after Johnson pump fakes, Towns, Towns at this exact moment, he's good at blocking guys like this, but not necessarily on the recovery. Again, here's another look at Towns trying to protect the rim vertically. Zachary. And that French kid got around him a little bit way too easy. And ironically, <laughs> you know, it's amazing how this kid actually went off because this year's draft class, they're struggling, really. I mean, I've never remember seeing a first overall pick just come off the bench in the first two games. And a lot of these lottery guys this season, they actually got DMPs in the first few games. That's how rough it's been. And for this kid to not even get anywhere near 30 minutes a game and even average even 15 points a game or even double digits, 
but for him to get 33 points in this game it kind of said a lot and there's gonna be a lot of work to be done now check out shingun going one-on-one -on -one with og he's gonna beat him off the dribble towns low man to protect the rim look at shingun go right through him it wouldn't shock me if tibbs this season ends up going sort of the similar route that the minnesota timberwolves have went with rudy gobert and towns kind of playing two bigs at the same time that's why we're waiting mitchell robinson to make his return and see what are the moves are going to be made and also how far can they progress ariel haporti to be inserted in this lineup i mean hopefully he can provide some sort of rim protection but we might be forced to play two bigs they end up working out for Minnesota. They finished a top defense last season. With the rim protection, it's just not Carl Anthony Towns. I don't want to make it seem like it's just him. Check out Reed Shepard right here. Another rookie. This is the third overall pick. Had a great summer league, and he's coming off the bench. Once again, this draft class is very interesting. Uh, these guys are barely getting minutes, these lottery picks. And <laughs> this, is, this is a very unique league right now, but... Um, yeah, check out the rim protection right here. There's three guys on him. No contest. And he gets a layup over three guys surrounding him. There's a lot left to be answered. See right here, what do the Knicks do when they're dealing with a good post player like Shingun? What adjustments do they make? Towns is the low man. He's kind of looking at Smith Jr. He's kind of he's guarding him. They got Brunson on Brooks because he can't really shoot. But what adjustments do they make here? Because Shingun is just dominating in the post. So teams that have post players like this, what happens when the Knicks meet Jokic? Denver might as well just go to the post game because the Knicks don't really have an answer for it as they've shown in this game. Once again, same scenario playing out. The game is tight. Going down the stretch. One-on-one -on -one with Shingun and OG. Towns is the low man. OG gets beat. But look at Towns, no reaction. Let's look at that again. Look at Towns, there's just no reaction. Towns kind of struggles at times having his eyes on his man and the ball at the same time. I've, I've always noticed that about him since he's been in Minnesota. Funny enough, Walt Clyde Frazier always refers to that when he's actually asked about the game itself, especially on defense. He consistently makes that reference. Here's an example of when the defensive chemistry is done right between OG and Towns. Towns way out here with Jabari Smith Jr. And pay attention to OG. Let's check that out one more time. One thing I want you to notice is Josh Hart. He does the same thing on the other side. See? Notice he doesn't follow Brooks. He stays off of him. Brooks is a horrible shooter. I don't know. For some reason in this game, he was knocking down threes. There was a whole lot of flukiness to this game. Even uh, Jalen Green with that crazy step back in the fourth quarter over two guys. Very unusual game. Here's another example right here. Third quarter winding down. Look how open the paint is. And then look at OG this whole time. He is putting in work. Just contesting that so he can miss that dunk. But they get the puck back. But at the end of the day, OG was OG was on his P's and Q's defensively right there. But there's a lot we got to do to protect the rim this season because <laughs> things are just way too wide open down there. And just even off these rebounds right here, this is a trickle-down issue of us just grabbing these defensive boards too many second chance opportunities so the Knicks right here are in between rotations and the Rockets have Steven Adams out here real center the defensive glass continues to be an issue for us he barely jumped right there look at OG got knocked down to the ground Steven Adams is strong as fuck this guy's a real center but once again with Towns sitting out and even with him in the game the defensive rebounding seems to be an issue. By the way, check out how strong Steven Adams is. OG goes right to his chest and barely moves him. Sheesh. 
So even with Cat on the floor, we're going to see him not be able to gain full position on that box out. And Shingun catches the offensive rebound. And once again, Houston gets more second chance points. So even though Towns does have a size of a center, he does play more like a power forward. But Shingun is a traditional power forward slash center, the way he plays. And he has a good base underneath him. He has good foundation, strong legs. And he plays more like a traditional big. So it is creating a lot of issues for us at the moment. So the Knicks kind of being shorthanded and Tibbs going through this bench unit. Towns right here, he contests his shot. And it's Kolick, McBride, and now you got Josh Hart and Bridges, who really hasn't gotten a lot of rebounds this season thus far. And Eaton right here, six foot eight. This is a forward. He's going to notice it right away and go right in there and take full advantage. Once again, more second chance points for the Rockets. But things are getting tight with that bench unit. And anytime Cat just contests anything in the perimeter, it leaves us exposed on the defensive glass. Some more defensive rebounding issues right here. Check out Car Anthony Towns. This is the rookie right here, Zachary. No box out. But a play like that is fixable. Simple box out, more attention to details. Those things can alleviate this issue. This time around, we're going to see what happens when Cat is actually the one contesting who's left over to protect the defensive glass. These are the issues that continue to plague us, especially on the part of the road trip that was in Houston and in Atlanta. And I understand that some of the fan base is caught by surprise by these early season struggles. But once again, it is part of the process here. Now, the NBA officials do put out a statement from time to time going over certain rules and how the game is officiated. So we'll put that into comparison versus what we've seen on the court during this road trip. The first point of education for the 2024-2025 NBA season is straight line pathway plays. Here, the offensive player, Bradley Beal, establishes a straight line path toward the basket, and the defensive player, Colin Gillespie, moves into Beal's path, and he makes contact that is clearly more than marginal. This contact by Gillespie moves Beal off his path, and the defensive foul was correctly called. You fellas keep that in mind because right here we're going to see Daniels actually go right into Brunson. Brunson never impedes his path. And of course the Knicks get called for the foul. Check out Bradley Beal. The defender goes right into Beal. That is not what Brunson did right there. The league has been very inconsistent to start off this season. I don't know if the checks ain't clear, but <laughs> or they stopped recruiting out of Philly. But whoever they had last season, especially going into the playoffs, they need to put them right back in there because this is some bullshit. So very early on, the Knicks fourth quarter identity has been put to the test in this road trip. It kind of started out in Miami, them leading a comeback in that third quarter, really the whole second half, but mainly in Houston, also in Atlanta. And just looking at the way it played out, the shot selections weren't really the best. And once again, all the issues that we have from the rim protection, the defensive rebounding, all the paint protection issues kind of came tumbling down on us. And things led astray, and it showed in the fourth quarter execution. All right, so we're going to start off in the Houston game. Now, going down the stretch in the fourth quarter, we're down single digits. This is a brand new possession after previously we gave up an easy post up basket to Shingun. And we're going to notice that the quality of shots that we're getting off doesn't necessarily have any continuity attached to it. Guys are not touching the ball. There's no movement. There's no flow. There's nothing. Guys are basically a, a, a bland piece of chicken out there. No seasoning, no nothing. A few possessions later, once again, we're looking at the quality of shots, a bunch of back and forth, and this is what we get. Brunson a little lucky right there. So after some Brunson made free throws, we're down by one. And once again, some of the things I talked about earlier, we're giving up way too many pain points. Too easy for Shingun. Nick's still down three, running pick and roll with Josh Hart. Shingun right here, he hedges on the screen. So Josh Hart, if he rolls... Which he does, 
It's a proper read made by Brunson. And Josh Hart, low key, the thing he provides to this offense is easy buckets. Very underrated thing about this starting unit is uh, Josh Hart. And it, it really tends to go underappreciated. And he makes things very easy for this offensive unit to just get smooth buckets without guys having to get into their bags and just fadeaways and step backs on multiple defenders. So not only Josh Hart gets other guys easier buckets with all his cutting and his passing, but also his rim finishing is A1. Here's another example of Josh Hart just creating some easy offense with his penetration. I'm telling you, he's one of the key components to this starting unit. I didn't see it in the start of the season. I thought he should come off the bench to provide some spark to that unit, but he's really needed with the starters. So Knicks once again get this down to one. Shingun is going to blow by OG and look who's in the lane to help out, but really never gets to it. So more easy paint points for the Rockets. So Knicks down three, and once again, something that's been plaguing us all year, the offensive boards. As Josh Hart fouls Shingun right there. So the Rockets get another opportunity, as well as get a chance to take more time off the clock. So after the Rockets were able to take more time off the clock, and OG got to stop, as you can see right here with Brunson in this possession, what do you notice? The ball <laughs> never moves. It just sticks with one man, and he takes a tough shot. But they're still only down by three with plenty of time left. So now we're going to jump into crunch time in Atlanta. We're going to go right back to that Houston game. We're going to notice a few things that happen very similar in crunch time. We have to work way too hard in our possessions just to make a shot. We just won a challenge, got the possession back up five with the ball. So we worked our way into a difficult shot, but the game is still in the Knicks advantage. So the Hawks were able to knock down a three. And so the Knicks are still up two. And if you notice right here, Daniels, one of the best defenders on the Hawks, is right on Brunson. And Josh Hart is going to try to initiate a switch. Right here does present an opportunity, though. Because Trey Young on that recovery, he's going to go right back to Josh Hart. And the Knicks low-key, they have a mismatch right here in the middle. It's not even about Brunson trying to get this pass over. Josh Hart, at this point, he could begin to post up on Trey Young right here. He could post him up. Might as well. Brunson could back out, let him post up, but Josh Hart is going to rescreen right here. He's going to rescreen, and the Knicks right now are in a situation where they're going to take a much more difficult shot. So once again, with the talent they have on the floor, they're working way too hard to get decent looks off. Let's look at that again. On the switch, see right there, Josh Hart, he at least had gotten the ball back with at least nine seconds to post up Trey Young. Brunson could have backed up, bought Dyson Daniels with him, and then dump it in there for him to take advantage. And if anyone collapses, you can kick out because Capella, if he collapsed, you know, Towns could be out here. Um, OG could be out here if his man collapsed. So there's options. Same thing for Bridges, man. Everyone, everyone past Josh Hart right here is a shooter. Shooter, shooter, shooter. So it could have been options, but instead right here, Josh Hart is attempting a rescreen. But at the end of the day, there are easier ways to get shots because this offense can do a lot more. The ball doesn't necessarily have to be in Brunson's hands all the time. And we've seen this play out plenty of times in Dallas, playing alongside Luka. Brunson was in a catch and shoot role he still was able to get in his groove. He was still able to operate and kind of remind guys that he has an off-ball game as well as always being on ball. So in the very next defensive possession, if you notice Bridges is creeping up and Josh Hart, he's also going to blitz Trey Young. Now right here, I'm wondering why Bridges didn't stay back a little bit because Dyson Daniels is a very average shooter from the, just the field, not even from three-point range. Shooting is not really his thing. But he's going to let Zachary, the first overall pick, kind of cut through the middle of this. I'm surprised Bridges just didn't creep up just enough. Because Daniels is not letting it out from here. See? Why is Bridges so far up on Daniels? 
I understand that the rotations, you know, with the blitzing, but the Bridges could have kept it right here. Just stay in the high post area. And with that, the Hawks tied the game. Now, after both sides shot some free throws, Towns takes this corner three, but there is plenty of time left in the shot clock. And also with Towns, he's about 50 pounds heavier than Dyson Daniels. He could have attacked his closeout. We've seen him go downhill on much bigger guys and get them out the way. But it's about the shot he took and what it led up to. Because him being in the corner like that in transition, it just leaves things open for the Hawks to attack. But still, even with all the mistakes, they're still in the game. 46 seconds left, three-point game. Okay, so jumping back to the Rockets game, after a tough shot, in transition, very similar to the Hawks game, Knicks quickly give up a bucket with very little contesting. So with the Knicks down five, Shingun hedges, and Josh Hart is going to just slip this right here. And Brunson makes the right read. Once again, Josh Hart makes the starters get very easy buckets. Knicks again right here, down five. Brunson coming off this screen, pulls up. Still kind of a touch shot in motion. But just real early on, we're just examining the quality of shots they're getting in crunch time situations. Sometimes there's very little actions involving bridges and towns away from Brunson. So when Brunson's coming off that screen, there should have been possibly another action happening on the other side involving either towns or bridges to get free. But guys are still kind of working through the kink, so... It's still early. Jumping back to the Hawks game. Same scenario playing out here. Knicks down by three. Brunson with the ball. There's plenty of time left in the shot clock. We got to see what actions possibly could happen away from Brunson being on the ball. And low key, he's on the Hawks best defender, Daniels. So I'm surprised they don't run any type of action to get the rookie confused right here. Zachary. And you also have two small defenders down low. OG could easily body one of them and finish. Same thing for Josh Hart. He's a good finisher at the rim. So there's options away from Brunson. It doesn't always have to be isolation pull up three. So similar scenarios played out in both games in major crunch time situations. Now jumping back to the Rockets game, Knicks down five with a minute left to go. So just everything piling on top of each other from the lack of rim protection, the bad shot selections, and eventually these teams are going to have players when they're on fire. You add it on top of all that is game over. And Jalen Green, I'm shocked, man. <laughs> this shot right here, boy, I, <laughs> he's really added that to his arsenal this season. But when something like that happens, it's, it is what it is. But guys are definitely going to be working out their kinks. It's still early. And there's a lot of things to clean up, but we'll see what uh, how Tibbs actually handles this. Um, it's been a kind of a long road trip, kind of awkward going down to South Beach, then Detroit, then Houston, then Atlanta. But it is what it is. We don't have LeBron James on our team to get that favorable schedule. And hopefully uh, guys are going to make their adjustments. So we'll see how it plays out. Until next time, you fellas stay safe. Peace.